By now, you hopefully have a pretty good understanding for how maximum and minimum points on graphs work. The big idea with a maximum or a minimum is that the gradient is always zero. We can use the idea of the gradient being zero to solve real life problems that ask us to find the maximum or minimum of something. These problems are called optimization problems, and they're actually really easy to solve. Let's look at the most typical optimization question. We're told that a farmer wants to make a new rectangular paddock. He has a total of 80 meters of fencing. What will the dimensions of the paddock be that maximizes the area inside it? On the surface, it doesn't look like we've been given enough information to really do anything. For example, where's the equation that we'll be needing to differentiate? Well, let's draw a diagram to make things more obvious. We know that the paddock's going to be a rectangle shape, so let's make a basic image to get us started. Great, now that we've also been told that the total length of fencing that the farmer has is 80 meters, we can update our diagram using that information. Since the two lengths are the same and the two widths are the same, the length plus the width will add to 40 meters. So if length plus width equals 40 meters, then we can rearrange this to be width equals 40 minus length. Let's use this to update our drawing. Excellent. The original question asked to maximize the area of the paddock. So we're going to need to form an equation for the area. Since the paddock is in the shape of a rectangle, this is easy. Area equals length times width. Now remember that we also know that width equals 40 minus length. So we can replace the width in the area equation with a 40 minus length. This brings us to the equation area equals length times 40 minus length. Let's replace area with A and length with L to make things a little easier to read. So A equals L times 40 minus L. If we go and expand this equation, we get A equals 40 L minus L squared. Okay, so we spent all this time coming up with a single equation, but now what? Well, remember that we're trying to maximize the area. So you can think of this area equation as the equation of a regular graph. What the question wants us to do is find out where the gradient is zero. That means we need to differentiate this equation. Don't let the fact that we've got an A on the left and L's on the right confuse you. You can just treat this as if it were a normal y equals x equation, which means that instead of dy dx, we need dA dl. Now we need to replace the gradient dA dl with a zero and solve for L. 40 minus 2L equals zero, 2L equals 40, L equals 20. Fantastic. The great news is that we now know that in order for the area of the paddock to be as large as it could possibly be, the length needs to be exactly 20 meters. Okay, so what about the width? Well, we can hop back to the width equation to help us find out what the width will be when the length is 20 meters. Width equals 40 minus 20 equals 20 meters. Great, so the width and the length are both going to be 20 meters, which means that the farmer's paddock will actually wind up being a square with an area of 400 square meters. The power of differentiation, eh? In kinematics problems, we take situations that involve objects that are moving, and we use integration and differentiation to solve problems about those objects. In order to be able to attack these problems, there's a few really important things you need to know about distance, s, speed, v, and acceleration, a. The best way to explain how this relationship works is to begin with distance. You should know that we can find the speed of something by taking how far it travels, the distance, and dividing that by how long it took, the time. What it essentially means is that the speed is the change in distance over the change in time, or speed equals d distance d time. To put an even better way, we've just shown that when we differentiate distance, we end up with speed, 
And that's exactly what the first blue arrow is showing you. And what about acceleration? We can find the acceleration of an object by taking how much its speed changes and dividing that by how long it took for the speed to change. In other words, we can say that acceleration equals a change in speed over a change in time. Or even better, we can say that acceleration equals d speed d time. Which means that if we're going to take a speed equation and we differentiate it, we're going to end up with an equation for acceleration. That's what the second blue arrow shows you. So let's look at the kind of question that we're talking about here. Let's say you get told that the speed of a car is given by the equation v equals 2t squared minus 3t minus 4. And the problem you get given is, what will the acceleration of the car be after 2 seconds? The first thing you need to realize is that t is simply measuring time in seconds. Now we've already been given a speed equation, and so in order to turn that into an acceleration equation, we simply need to differentiate. a equals 4t minus 3. Great. Now that we know this, all we need to do is replace the t with a 2, and we can answer the question. a equals 4 times 2 minus 3 equals 5. And so after 2 seconds, the car will be accelerating at 5 meters per second per second. Let's take another look at that incredible diagram. If you take a look at those red arrows, you'll see that if you take acceleration and integrate it, you'll end up with speed. And then if you take that and integrate it again, you'll have distance. The main thing that trips students up in these questions is that they forget to add in a plus c when they integrate, so don't be one of those students. Let's look at a different question involving integration. A car starts from rest. If its speed can be modelled with the equation v equals 3t minus 4, how far will it have travelled after 10 seconds? We'll begin with a simple integration of the equation for speed. Distance equals the integral of 3t minus 4 dt equals 3 over 2t squared minus 4t plus c. Once again, take special care not to forget to add on plus c to your integral. Now, before we can figure out what the distance will be after 10 seconds, we need to figure out what c is. The piece of information to focus on here is this. A car starts from rest. The phrase from rest tells us that before the time starts, the car is not moving. This tells us two very important pieces of information. When t equals zero, speed equals zero, and distance equals zero. It's the second piece of information we're focusing on now. We can replace the distance in our equation with a zero and the t with a zero. If we solve the equation for t, we get zero equals three divided by two times zero squared minus four times zero plus c. And so c equals zero. Great. So we can now say that the final equation for the distance of the car is distance equals 3 over 2 times t squared minus 4t. The original question asked us to calculate how far the car had traveled after 10 seconds. In other words, when t equals zero, what is distance? All we have to do is swap the t's in our equation with 10's and work it out on our calculators. Distance equals 3 over 2 times 10 squared minus 4t equals 150 minus 40 equals 110 meters. And there you have it, everything you could possibly want to know about kinematics, and possibly some things that you didn't. Remember, we can use the properties of maxima and minima to solve optimization problems. Differentiating a distance equation will give a speed equation, and differentiating a speed equation gives an equation for acceleration. Likewise, integrating an acceleration equation produces a speed equation, and speed produces distance.